Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to week two of our, of our video series. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the writing process. Now last week we talked about uh, the eight parts of speech as far as what roles that the, the words play within, uh, within writing, within speech, within the English language in general. Right. We talked about prepositions and nouns and pronouns and adverbs and adjectives and interjections and verbs and uh, did I mention nouns? Okay, but anyway, we talked about all of those things and we talked about how they all work together, each one of them having a different role, how those things played together and to create some sort of meaning. It's fantastic to understand. You absolutely must understand how that works uh, if you really want to understand uh, how, to, how, to, how to, to construct that language. But what we really need to understand, too, is that language is not just something you need to understand. It's actually something you need to use, and you need to do something with it, right? And since this class is about writing, we're going to talk primarily this week about the writing process. What, do, what steps can you take? How do you go about creating something with words in writing, right? So this week, that's the writing process, right? So let's go ahead and move into it. Okay, so as we have written here, this lecture has been created to walk you through the process of writing, aptly named the writing process, right? This is a word that we use industry-wide. So uh, we're going to look at those steps in the process and talk about them in some detail. Not extensively, but just in some detail, right? And when we've reached the end, though, you should have a good idea of what this process is and how you can use it to make the most of your writing, right? So before we get started, and I know it says right here on the bottom of the screen, let's get started, and you're ready to go and you're, ge you're geared up. Uh, however, um, one thing that you need to understand as we explore this is, is a lot of this stuff is not done in the order in which we explain it. Now, it can be done in that order, but what you need to do as a writer, and maybe, you, maybe you're working on it, you're going to have to work to develop this, but you're going to have uh, a certain way of doing things. You're going to do some of these steps before other steps, some of these steps after other steps. You're going to kind of mix it up a little bit. But this is a general look at how this all goes together. All right, so now let's go ahead and get started. But understand that, that your writing process will be your own. And your responsibility as a writer is to figure out what works best for you. All right? So uh, that's one thing about writing that, that is, is a little bit difficult to understand is there's no clear-cut rules as far as uh, when to do certain things. But hopefully this gives you at least some organization as we move on. Okay, so. The first part in, in our, the way we're going to explain it, the first part is pre-writing. And we call this brainstorming, right? This is the thing where we're going to come up with ideas um, and, and, and so on and so forth. First, the first step in this, in this part of the process is decide on your topic. Decide what you're going to write about. Now, as we go through the class, we're going to talk about different ways that you can find those topics, talk about ways that you can, you can, uh, you can kind of look at, at your text or you can look at what's, what's going on in your life and find those things to write about. Because the first one is, this, is deciding on your topic. Second one is, is to figure out who your readers are or who your audience is. Right? You don't want to, you, you want to write, you're writing to somebody, right? So in this, in this construction, right, and when you think about it, we'll go back to the whole idea of the verbs and the nouns and what, the way those work together. Uh, we have, we're, we're writing, so that's our verb, right? Well, our verb, we're doing something, right? We're actually doing something. But in this construction, we also need to do something to something else, right? So we need to make sure we're doing something to, we're, we're writing and we're writing to uh, our audience. And, and we need to understand who they are so the things that we write actually fit. You don't want to write a letter to your grandmother, right, the same way that you would write a letter to your best friend or the same way that you would write a, uh, an application to a scholarship committee or the same way you would write a paper uh, for your uh, business class or whatever class you're taking. So learn who your topic, who your audience is. Um, if you're doing this in academic writing, one of those things that will help you along is the criteria sheet. Uh, you'll understand a little bit that, about that later. Uh, but the criteria sheet that you're looking at as far as what the instructor is going to be looking for. So writing for college will we'll have a list of things you need to, to talk about. So the third thing is uh, to think about what you would like to say about your topic. Right? You may want to write about, let's just use a really broad topic, you want to write about birth control. right? Well, what do you want to say about birth control? You just can't just write about birth control. There's just, it's just too big of a topic. So what do you want to say about it? Do you want to say that birth control should be available to, uh, to teenagers? Uh, do you want to say that it shouldn't be available to teenagers? Do you want to just kind of explore the different types and so on? 
Okay, so this, uh, the, the fourth thing we have here on our list. These are things you'll learn, right, as we go forward. But anyway, try using a technique such as listing, clustering, or pre-writing to start collecting your ideas. Like I said, we'll get into that in a little more detail as the class moves on, but it's just, but just kind of as we're exploring the writing process, um, we'll just, we'll kind of leave it at that. But basically, these are, these are methods to find your ideas and to start exploring those ideas, right? Um, if you're doing research, think about where you'd like to find some of your sources, right? Are you going to do a Google search, right? So you're, let's just go back to our birth control topic, right? You want to write about birth control. Um, maybe you want to do some research and maybe you want to go uh, do a Google search and find out what people are talking about uh, as far as birth control. Maybe you want to go into our EBSCO database, which you'll learn more about as you go through. Uh, and so it's kind of a, our scholarly uh, uh, collection of, of articles and so on and so forth. Uh, maybe you want to go there. Maybe you want to go to a book. Maybe you want to use a, uh, uh, um, a con uh, uh, an expert in the field that you maybe know. Maybe you can go interview them, that type of thing. But think about where you're going to find those sources if you're going to use them. Now, this class isn't going to ask that you use too many of those, but it's just kind of something to keep in mind. So let's move on to the next one. The next stage in our process is called drafting, right? This is where you actually sit down and write. Now, maybe you've done your pre-writing, maybe you've done that stuff, but this is where you start kind of pulling those ideas together, giving it some sort of organization, actually, you know, um, making some definition as far as where you're going. So, drafting is something that you'll probably visit several times throughout the, the creation or the construction of your essays. But let's start at the beginning. Uh, put your information in your own words. I can't express that enough. Don't go online and take someone else's words, right? Put them in your own words. Put, uh, the, the, the whole idea behind writing is, uh, especially in the, in the academic environment, is to demonstrate that you understand uh, what it is that you're talking about. Now, you can't demonstrate that understanding by using someone else's words. So make sure you use your own words. Uh, I'm not saying you have to create your own language, obviously, uh, but just, just put it in, in, your own, in your own understanding, you know, in, in your own uh, words. Sorry. Um, write your rough draft. Um, don't think your initial draft needs to be perfect. So the first time you write this, the first time you put it together, don't think that it needs to be perfect. There's going to be mistakes. Don't worry so much about grammar in the first part of it. Don't worry so much about punctuation. Don't even worry so much that your ideas are really flowing together that well. Just try and put it together in the best way that you can, and you'll revisit that as you go along. Um, as we're saying in our third point, read over your work to see what it says, or to see if it says what you want it to say, and fix any issues you might find. So, uh, one of the problems with writing, writing is a wonderful tool. It's the best way, really, to connect with another person, right? Uh, I mean, other than, I mean, it, maybe talking to someone is really great, but if you want to connect to that person in a really deep way and really explain yourself in, 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 in very deeply, you do it through writing because writing is something that allows you to work out those ideas before you're expressing them, right? So, um, read over your work. Make sure it says what you want it to say, Right, and then fix any issues you might find. Some, I mean, it's going to be uh, one of the biggest problems that writers have, and even really experienced writers have, is taking those ideas from their head and getting them on paper in a way that makes sense. That's really hard to do because we have a lot of ideas in our head, and writing is really tr is really limiting us to just explaining a few of those ideas and explaining them in a very very tightly controlled way. So it it, it kind of takes away from all that that chaos that goes on in our brains. Um, so we want to make sure that we, we check to make sure it says what we want it to say. Uh, the fourth one on our list, if you've researched uh, this essay and plan to use quotations to support what you were saying, pick out those quotations and find places to insert them into your work. Right? Fi figure out what quotations you're going to use, why you're using the words of others, how those words that you're using of other people actually make your essay better. Remember, this is your essay, but how do they make this better? Right? And then our last step in the drafting process here is to share with your network. As you go along, you should develop a network of friends, coworkers, uh, maybe a writing tutor, maybe people at the writing center, um, uh, your family, whatever. Having someone to read your papers and read your, your writing before you send it out into the world. And then ask them for su suggestions. If you read it aloud to them, if you have them read it aloud, really look for ways that, that maybe they struggle, they stumble over words, or they, st or they don't really fully understand ideas. Have them be really honest with you, and that way you can really work with those ideas and, and make it as strong as possible. Let's go on. 
Okay, so um, the next one in our process is revising, right? So we've talked about pre-writing, right? Getting those ideas together, brainstorming, figuring out what you're going to write about. We've talked about drafting, right? We've talked about uh, really uh, putting those words on paper, trying to really work it out, trying to get those things, those things correct, trying to really make them the best they can be. Now we're in a revising process. And, and to me, this is the most important part of the entire writing process. A uh, really famous writer, a uh, um, uh, Pulitzer Prize winning author, James Michener, he actually says, I'm not a very good writer, but I'm an excellent rewriter. And so this is the point at which you take the ideas you've had on paper, you've, you've, you've challenged yourself to get everything on, on, on paper, you've worked to make it as correct as possible, you've shared it with your network of people, whoever you can get to read it, the, the pre-readers, if you will, before you've turned this in for a grade. But now, you still haven't turned it in yet, because now it's time to revise. It's time to read over your work again, as we say in the first part, and then and, and to make those corrections. So the first one, yes, read over your work again. The best way to do this is after you've done drafting, try to put it away. Try to put, don't try and do this all in one step. Try and put it away for a couple of days, get those ideas flushed out of your head, and pick it back up again. Now, I know in, 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 in college, especially you know, when you're doing an online school, you don't have a lot of time, so you really want to start early so you can get to this step. But this is the most important step, so make sure you're here every, every time you write something. But read over your work again. Consider any advice you received. Uh, will any of those suggestions make it better? Right? You may get advice from your instructor. You may get advice from your friends. You may get advice from, your, from anyone in your network. Some of that advice might not be good advice. You might think, eh, I, you know, I, I see that, but I, it's, maybe it's a little too hard to do, or, you know, that's a really neat idea, but it doesn't really fit with what I'm doing, or maybe that's a terrible idea, and that would just really ruin anything that I'm trying to do. Really consider that. Really critically look at that, those suggestions, and then take the ones that are good, discard the ones that are bad, get rid of those. Because um, you will get mixed advice, typically. Um, Third one on our list, consider rearranging the flow of information to see if it can be more effective. Maybe you have, maybe when you're putting your ideas together, you're trying to blend a couple of ideas, and maybe it, it seems a little, um, a, a little um, mixed up in, throughout your essay. See if maybe you can, you can separate those elements and move them in different areas and, and, uh, and, and, and make it kind of flow better so the ideas work out a little better. This is something you'll get really good at as you move along. Maybe in the beginning you're going to struggle a little bit about with, with this, but that's okay. It's, it's fine. This is a learning process. These are things that, that don't necessarily come naturally. Uh, these are things that we have to work on. So consider rearranging that. Uh, the, th uh, the fourth one on our list, consider adding or removing passages. Sometimes within, within your writing you say something that doesn't really fit the rest of what you're saying. I'm not saying throw it away, but take it out of that essay, save it for later, if you want to. Maybe it's a really great idea, but maybe it just doesn't really fit. Or maybe you're, 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 uh, you're on to something, but you haven't quite explored it enough, and you think you need to add a little more. Consider that. Consider adding or removing passages. Consider uh, our, our next one on the list. Consider changing words that don't quite fit. Sometimes language, you know, we think we're saying something really interesting, but maybe, that, maybe we're not using the correct words. So go through and look at that. And then our last one on the list is, are there any areas that still seem unclear after you've gone through all this process? Is there still things that might seem unclear? And if there are, maybe you need to go back through and consider adding or subtracting or consider changing the wording or consider rearranging the information, those type of things. All right, so let's move on. This is our second to last step, right? And it's really funny that we get to the second to last step because this is the part that really makes, that really stands in the way of writers. This is the biggest barrier, I think, in my experience. This is the biggest barrier to, for, for student writers, especially uh, people who uh, maybe struggle a little bit with language. And this is the proofreading section. A lot of people get caught up in the very beginnings with, with, with problems with grammar or problems with punctuation or problems with, with those type of things. Know when you're beginning, when you're doing your drafting, you're going to get to this. Right, you're going to get to the proofreading. This is going to be one of your last steps. Right, so proofreading, and this is basically cleaning up your areas. Your, I'm sorry, your era, errors. Wow, wow. Yeah, clean up your area. Make your, make sure your your desk is clean, and uh, and and such. But anyway, yeah. So you're cleaning up any errors. Um, number one, check for sentence fragments and run-on sentences. These are really popular. We'll discuss these more as we go through the class. But make sure that those are are cleaned up. Correct any issues with punctuation, capitalization, formatting, spelling, etc. 
Okay, and then the next one on our list is uh, look for misused words. Of course, we went over this in the textbook in week one. Look for any misused words. Look for things that like, maybe you've used affect or effect incorrectly. Maybe you've used uh, there, there, or there in the wrong construction, or two, 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 or, uh, or something to that degree. Uh, make sure you, you're, you're fixing any of those misused words. Uh, make sure that, that, uh, it, it, that your, your words are, are the ones that you wanted to use and the ones that express what you wanted to say. Uh, the, the next one on this is have someone check your work. We have a really great writing center here at Grantham University, so having them go through your work is fantastic. Uh, if you can get a classmate or if you can get a family member or someone that you know is, is pretty good with their, with their grammar and their usage and those type of things, uh, have them check your work. Um, or just have them read it aloud, and if they're pausing in the wrong places or if they're getting confused in, in with your words, maybe you need to go through and check that. And then, of course, then we're back and we're saying revise if necessary. So we're going all the way back to the revision process. Notice that we're not going in a, in a, in a, uh, in a linear uh, order. We're not necessarily going from, you know, step one to step, you know, step five. We are going to step one to step two to step one to step three to step four to step three to step two to, you know, we're, we're basically all over the place. So, uh, but that's okay because that's what writing is all about. Um, so just know that you're going to spend a little bit of time working on these things. So uh, then we have our very last one in our list today, right? And this is publishing, and this is really, really simple. Now, if you're going to be uh, a, a famous writer one day, or you're just gonna, or you're going to be someone who writes for a living one day, publishing is, is going to be, maybe mean something a little different. It's gonna be sending it to your editor, you know, having them work with it, and then they, they're going to send it on to, uh, to basically be published. Uh, in, our, in, in our purposes here in college, is going to uh, basically be sending it to your instructor uh, for a, a grade, if you will. So quite simply, share your work with your readers. You know, here in, here in college, your readers are going to be um, your, your instructors for the most part. Um, in the, the workplace, your readers are going to be maybe uh, your boss or your client or uh, maybe your coworker or something to that degree. Uh, but basically, yeah, just sending it on uh, to that. So. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, uh, any comments on this video, any comments on, on uh, the way the class is going, please let your instructor know. Your instructor is there to help you. Uh, they're there to work with you to make sure that you get the most out of this class. And if we, in, uh, in the design of these videos or in the design of this class, if we've done anything or uh, gone over something too quickly or not explored something enough or maybe we've run something into the ground a little bit, let us know and we can work on maybe correcting that in the future, maybe for, for future students. So any comments, any questions, any concerns, please let us know. Uh, uh, go through your instructor and let them know and, uh, and we appreciate you uh, watching week two's videos and we'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye.